Hello, I am Dr. Sneha Varki from Department of Pediatrics, Christian Medical College, Valor. Today, I would like to talk about a condition called cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis or CF is a rare genetic condition. It is fairly common in people of European origin, affecting about 1 in 3,000 persons. But it is su supposed to be rare or even non-existent in India. But now we have reason to believe that there are a number of children affected with cystic fibrosis in India. Very often, this condition is not diagnosed or treated early, resulting in deaths in infancy or early childhood. Due to the rarity of the condition, often misdiagnosis as TB or asthma or diarrheal illnesses happens. At CMC, we care for these children with the help of a multidisciplinary team consisting of pediatric doctors in different specialties like respiratory medicine, uh, gastro, gastroenterology, endocrinology, and intensive care. In addition, we have a team of well-trained physio and respiratory therapists, dietitians, and CF nurses who train and supervise the parents in the care of these children. Our work here, Cystic Fibrosis India Project, is in collaboration with the uh, Department of Pulmonary Medicine, Nationwide Children's Hospital, Columbus, Ohio, and is supported by a grant from CF Foundation USA for the period 2018 to 2021. We will be uploading a few videos which will help parents to learn about the condition cystic fibrosis and help them to care for the children in providing chest treatments, good nutrition, and pancreatic enzyme replacement to their children. Hi, I'm Dr. Grace Paul, a pediatric pulmonologist at Nationwide Children's Hospital, Columbus, Ohio. I take care of children with cystic fibrosis and I'm passionate about care for CF among the developing world. I work with Dr. Sneha Varki at CMC Velour and I'm part of the multidisciplinary cystic fibrosis team. Our project is now funded by the CF Foundation of the United States and they have helped us establish this CF Center and have provided us with resources to facilitate this project. CF, as you know, is a chronic inherited disease that affects the lung, intestines and multiple organ systems and as it is progressive, if left untreated, it could result in significant morbidity and mortality even in infants. The our, the goals of our project are to focus on education and uh, spreading awareness of CF. CF is currently thought to be a very rare or sometimes even a non-existent disease in India. And so we are proactively venturing out to teach physicians, ancillary staff, community doctors, um, medical students, and, um, and, and the patients and families about CF. Um, we are also focusing on improving diagnosis directly by improving awareness, increasing referrals, promoting aquagenic wrinkling, and also offering services for sweat chloride testing and mutation analysis at CNC Velour. Our, um, based on our preliminary data, we feel that the number of CF cases is much higher than what was previously thought to be, and CF may not be as rare a disease as previously considered. Uh, another goal of our project is to create cost-effective treatment protocols. Um, CF care is generally expensive and it would be important to create protocols using indigenous resources so that um, patient care can be sustained uh, and uh, be available for many uh, patients. The hard work and initiatives of our CF team were put to test during the pandemic and we are, the dedication and participation and commitment of the parents and families enabled us to succeed even during this pandemic. Um, we are also grateful for our multiple uh, partners and collaborators um, within, um, for CF care within India and from around the world as we all share the same dedication and uh, enthusiasm to improve CF care among uh, countries where resources may be lacking. Our goal is to create a brighter future for our children with CF. Thank you.
Hi, I am Shinsi. I am working with CMC Vellore as CF Dietitian. Today my session is about nutrition in cystic fibrosis. So from the previous sessions you would have known what cystic fibrosis is. So CF is a genetic disease which affects the lungs and the pancreas. In this disease, the mucus thickens in the lung thus causing it difficult to breathe. In the, pancre in the digestive system, it mainly affects the pancreas where the pancreatic duct is blocked thus preventing the absorption of fat and other nutrients from food. So why do you think CF children need more energy compared to other children? They need extra energy to breathe through the blocked airways, to constantly fight lung infections and to compensate for poor digestion and loss of nutrients in the stool. So why is it important to achieve normal growth in CF children? It has been shown through research that CF babies and children who maintain normal growth achieve better lung function. Hence, nutrition and diet plays an important role by meeting the energy needs and initiating normal growth in children with CF. So, what is nutrition? Nutrition is a study about the food and its utilization by the body. There are five major nutrients, namely carbohydrates, proteins, fats, vitamins and minerals. So, carbohydrates and fats are called as energy giving foods, whereas protein is called as body building foods and vitamins and minerals are used for protective and regulatory functions in the body. Lately, water is also considered as a nutrient. So, the nutritional guidelines by the experts suggest, following, suggest the following. So, getting the right amount of calories, pancreatic enzymes, fats and other nutrients are important. Adding additional calories and nutrients to the food is also considered important. So, we need to keep a track of the growth. So, so it is expected that a CF child has a BMI at or above the 50th percentile. So, let us get to know about all these guidelines in detail. So, getting the right amount of calories. So, what is a calorie? It is a measurement of the energy. So, it shows how much of energy your body can get from food. Next is the pancreatic enzymes. So, these enzymes are produced by the pancreas which helps in digesting nutrients from the food. In CF, the enzyme lipase responsible for the digestion of fats is affected. Next are the fats, vitamins and minerals. Then are the additional calories and nutrients which you are supposed to take and this I will be sharing in the rest of the talk. So, keeping track of growth. The common term which has been re regularly used is the growth monitoring. So, this is the measurement of a child's size. So, it includes the child's height, weight, uh, head circumference, mid arm upper circumference, etc. So, this helps tracking the child's growth and detect any early changes so that they can be treated. So, BMI. This BMI it refers to the body mass index. So, it is the ratio of the weight and height of an individual which measures the body fat. So, next is the nutritional management. So, a, li a liberty enjoyed by the CF child would be unrestricted diet. Children with CF need double the amount of energy than those required by individuals of the same age and gender. Also, normal children require approximately 25 to 30 percent of calories from fat and 6 to 10 percent from protein, whereas CF children need 40 percent from fat and 15 to 20 percent from protein. Next is the enzyme dosage. So, enzyme dosage differs for every children, uh, even it may differ for a child of two children of the same age because it is based on the weight gain, the amount of food consumed, the fat present in the food, the bowel movements and the growth of each child. So, next are the supplements, fat soluble vitamins which are vitamins A, D, E and K. So, what does a diet of a CF patient comprise of? So, men, as I mentioned earlier, it, it requires high calorie, high protein and high fat foods along with extra vitamins which are the vitamins A, D, E and K. Then the minerals, some of the important minerals are like iron. Iron helps to 
increased uh, hemoglobin level which carries oxygen in the body, then zinc which is important for the growth, healing and fighting of infections, then calcium which is important for gro bone growth in children and also prevents the weakening of bones which is called as osteoporosis. Then is the fiber, so adequate amount of fiber helps in regular bowel movement and plenty of salt because children, CF children lose salt through their sweat and then water. So, water prevents uh, constipation and dehydration in children with CF. So, why do you think we should add more calories to the food? So, the quantity of food consumed by an infant or by small children would be less, but the energy demand is high. So, we can't increase the quantity of the food. Therefore, it is best to improve the quality of the food by adding calorie rich foods that is fats to their regular food. Thus, though the quantity remains the same, the quality differs and food is made calorie dense. So, now I will tell you how to add some extra calories to the regular foods. So, for example, you can add your uh, fats, common fats like uh, oil, ghee or butter to your uh, regular foods like your rice, rotis, dosa, your dal or vegetables etc. You can add roasted or powdered nuts or even you can use them as whole nuts for uh, older children. So, these could include your ground nuts, cashew nuts, almonds etc. Then comes the milk and milk products. So, you can uh, include all these in your daily uh, conception. So, a general dal can be mixed with ghee and made more calorie rich. Then you can give egg on a daily basis and even non-vegetarian foods like your meat, fish or poultry can be included in your daily consumption. So, now I will be giving you certain dietary tips for uh, different age groups. So, for infants within 6 months of age, exclusive breastfeeding is recommended and based on the growth of the baby, the CF doctors may advise additional nutritional supplements. So, next are the tips to start weaning foods for babies with CF. So, weaning can start from around 4 to 6 months of age in CF babies. Breast milk can still be the major food, but try to incorporate weaning foods in between the breast feeds. Always start with one type of food. For example, your porridge can be made of either rice flour or ragi flour or multigrain flour with milk, oil, sugar and a pinch of salt. So, this adds to the calorie. In every fourth day, you can try adding some new food item. So, why we suggest 4 days? For 3 days, the child can get used to the one to use to one type of food. Once you see that the child tolerates it, you can add another type of food on the 4th day also. So, about 6 months, uh, by 6th month, you can slowly include your strained, pureed or boiled and well mashed dal, fruits or vegetables as a feed. So, gradually introduce combinations of food. It could be your rice, um, mashed rice, well cooked and mashed rice with some vegetable, fruits or dal which are also boiled and well cooked and mashed. So, remember to add extra calories for each serving. So, this can be done by adding uh, an additional spoon of your oils or fats and or you can add something like powdered nuts. So, by the mid of 7th month, you can start giving some boiled egg yolk with a little amount of milk or soup. It can be initially given 3 times a week and if tolerated, it can be further increased to once a day. So, by 8th month, you can start with non-vegetarian soups or foods uh, which are well mashed, pureed or blended with little seasoning. Make sure that you remove all the bones and hard parts. You can start including even uh, well cooked dal and rice in the form of khichdi or pongal. You can also add to it well cooked and minced meat or fish uh, to the regular foods. By around 9th month slowly you can start including your tiffin items. Uh, this could include your uh, idli, roti, idiyapam or rice dal combination which are soaked in milk, in soups or in dal water. So, you can additionally improve its calorie again by adding your oils or fats to it. 
So as teething starts, vegetables and fruits can be chopped into small pieces, they can be boiled and mashed. Even fruits can be mashed and given. Do not give hard food pieces. Gradually shift from the se soft semi-solids to solids by one year of age. So by one year, infants can be given normal family diet which are modified in small quantities but at frequent intervals. So the best indication of adequacy of diet is the growth pattern of the child. So feeding of an infant with supplementary food t uh, requires great care. So there is, you require greater skill on the part of a mother then selection of the suitable foods and cooking them in the suitable way. Then guiding the child to enjoy and eat foods and trying to be patient and resourceful enough. Next coming to the older children and adults. So how can we modify the commonly prepared foods at home? So the key points that you have to remember while preparing food for them is for children and adolescents every meal has to be energy packed and nutritious. The packed school lunch should be convenient to eat within a short duration of time. Foods need to be appealing and tasty enough, keeping in mind their choices and preference of food. Older children and adults generally get attracted to junk foods, so nutritionally modified versions of such foods can serve as a healthy alternative and these can be prepared right at home. So you can add oil, ghee or butter to regular foods like your uh, rotis, uh, dosa, rice, dal your, and uh, breads or even to vegetables uh, which can be well sorted with your uh, fats. Addition of uh, nuts, nuts which I said earlier could be your uh, cashew nuts, almonds, uh, then your groundnuts etc. So some of the simple ways to add this can be in your desserts. So you can make a dry fruit nut, dry fruit milkshake or dry fruit laddus or you can add these dry fruits to your kheer or payasam or to your regular foods like poha or upmas and uh, one of the easiest way can be making uh, a peanut butter and this can be added to your uh, breads, uh, rotis etc. In South India most of the people prefer uh, making chutneys with this nuts also. So for children below 5 years, do not give whole nuts, instead it can be roasted and powdered and then added to the foods. So modifications of milk and milk products. So since milk is consumed every day, the child might get bored on a daily basis after a long period of time. So you can add certain varieties or you can combine it with certain foods to make it more interesting. So one example could be your milkshakes. Uh, so the so to the milk you can add some powder roasted and powdered nuts or you can include some fleshy fruits like your mangoes or bananas uh, or you can just add a scoop of your ice creams or uh, you can add one or two cubes of chocolates also so this makes the milk uh, into a newer version so thus we have modified a regular food by adding more calories to it and making it more tasty and appealing also. So if your child is uh, allergic to uh, dairy products, you can also use soy milk or cow's milk as uh, soy milk or coconut milk as an alternative. Then you can include uh, paneer, uh, curd or fresh cream and even cheese in the regular foods. Next is pulses or dals. So how do you add dals? So dals can be powdered or cooked and mashed and mixed with your uh, batters, your dough. Then you can mix it with it and you can also uh, uh, sprout it and consume it just plain like that by adding just maybe one teaspoon of butter and then you can also make it as a savory. So, where, so eggs can be consumed daily. So eggs can be modified uh, or there can be different forms of uh, egg preparations which can be included in the food. So it can be either one day a boiled egg or an omelette or you can add it to your dosa or you can wrap it around in your rotis or you can even scramble it and mix it with your rice uh, to make it like an egg fried rice or you can just simply give it 
with your uh, bread as a bread omelet also. So non vegetarian foods in any form is most preferred by the by children and uh, most of them prefer uh, fried non vegetarian foods so even that is advisable so you can prepare all these right at home so most of the nutritional snacks that the children would enjoy would be the fried items so you can prepare all these foods at home so it can be your simple foods like cutlet or uh, some bhel puris or you can add coconut to certain foods uh, jaggery uh, ghee all these ingredients add more calorie to your foods. So now I will share some of the uh, calorie rich foods and protein and fat rich foods uh, and I will tell you how you can combine these so that uh, even the simple foods can become uh, calorie dense. So if you take your normal rice uh, it can be uh, so you can add scrambled egg to it you can add uh, pieces of uh, poultry, chicken or uh, meat to it and you can make it like a uh, fried rice. So this serves where the calorie rich food and the protein and fat rich food are all combined together in just one uh, in one dish. So also you can uh, include your potatoes and sweet potatoes. So these can be fried uh, made like chips or you can even use sweet potatoes for your baby foods. Uh, it can be well cooked and mashed and uh, it can be given along with the milk also. Uh, so you can try different combinations of food which has fat, protein as well as calorie in them. So most of the parents have this question. Uh, if uh, they can give their children uh, foods like milk, curd, ice creams, chocolates or fruits as they feel that this could be reason for their uh, for the respiratory problems. So as far as we have learned from all these sessions uh, the, the cough and the respiratory problems is uh, not because of the food rather it is because of the cystic fibrosis condition. Hence uh, it does not have any uh, role to play when it comes to the uh, intake of the food. So um, I would strongly suggest yes you can give all these foods but uh, anything can be in a uh, limited quantity not to be given in excess. So next coming on to the vitamins. So as we had said earlier we have to supplement vitamins uh, namely the vitamin A, D, E and K. So why are these important? Vitamin A, it helps in growth and development and for the maintenance of the immune system and good vision. And D, vitamin D, it helps in regulating, uh, it, it helps in the regulation of minerals like calcium and phosphorus and also maintains the proper bone structure and prevents bone related diseases. And vitamin E, it serves as an antioxidant and helps in fighting infections. It is also beneficial for the heart, skin, hair, etc. Vitamin K helps in the normal clotting functions of the blood. So next is the fiber. Adequate fiber helps in keeping the bowel movements regular. So foods like fruits, vegetables, uh, whole grains, beans, nuts and seeds are great sources of fiber. So fiber rich foods with plenty of fluids can regulate bowel movements. Salt. Salt loss in sweat of CF children is 3 to 4 times more than in other children. Hence, extra salt is given through the diet. Approximate daily requirements are for infants within 6 months, it could be 1 fourth teaspoon, and for infants between 6 to 12 months, could be half teaspoon, and for children and adults, they require extra salt depending on their activity. So extra salt can be added post exercise or play and also especially during hot climates. So if you uh, observe any of the symptoms like fatigue, dry mouth, nausea, vomiting uh, or decreased appetite uh, then, it, then you have to keep in mind that you have to uh, give your child extra salt through diet. So how to add extra salt to foods? So for infants it can be uh, adding your salt to water or your formula feeds or as an ORS. For children and adults, 
salt can be added to their fruit juices, soups, uh, vegetable or fruit salads, gravies or curries. Foods like cheese, salted butter, pickles, papads, your numpkins or chips and flavoured ORS etc. can be also included in the diet. So, very simple ways of adding salt to the foods on a daily basis could be adding a mixture of salt and chilli powder to the to your foods like cucumber, amla or gooseberry, uh, pineapple, mango, uh, then you even it can be mixed along with buttermilk also. The next is water. As salt and water are lost during hot days, uh, dehydration occurs. So, to prevent dehydration and constipation, people with CF need to replace both salt and fluids. So, plenty of fluids has to be consumed by children. So, children need around 1 and half to 2 liters of water per day and adolescents would require 2 to 2 and half liters per day. So, it is better to avoid going out during summer and prefer some cool places. So, the next important part of the session is pancreatic enzyme replacement therapy also known as PERT. In CF, the production of lipase is affected. Hence, we replace the naturally lost enzyme lipase in the form of a capsule. So, these capsule contains substances like protease, amylase and lipase. So, this capsule has beads like granules inside them. So, generally parents may be concerned with the overdosing of capsules, but in reality the lipase produced by the body naturally is much more than the prescribed dosage of capsules. Hence, it is perfectly safe to follow the prescribed dosage. So, the enzyme strength available in India are commonly the 10,000 international units and the 25,000 international units. So, these numbers denote the units of lipase content of the pancreatic enzymes. So, how to use a pancreatic enzyme? Ideally, it has to be taken before meals. So, for older children, it is easy to follow this, but for infants and young children, uh, since we are unsure if they will be completing the meals, so it is always better to give halfway through the meal or immediately by the end of the meal. So, for the amount of food consumed, the equal amount of pancreatic enzyme will also be given. Then do not crush or chew capsules or the contents of the capsule. So, when you crush or chew the capsule, it's, it gets inactivated. Then the granules which remain in the mouth for a long time can cause irritation or mouth ulcer. So, hence after the conception of the granule, you can always uh, rinse the mouth with some liquid. Then avoid mixing pancreatic enzymes with whole food. It means that you need not mix the enzymes with the total amount of food in your uh, in your bowel. So, because the enzymes can get lost, the granules are very smaller in size and it might get stuck to the sides of the vessels or it might get lost. Also, uh, do not serve it along with foods that are hot in temperature because its activity is lost. So, in case you miss a dose of the pancreatic enzyme, do not panic. Try to compensate it in other feeds along with high fat foods. So, there is you need not use pancreatic enzymes with low fat foods uh, like fruits or fruit juices, vegetables which are not cooked like the raw ones or the salads and aerated drinks. So, parents might have this question, how to check if the dosage of pancreatic enzyme which I administer is right. So, if there is good weight gain and there is no oily stool or no foul smelling stool, then uh, it is an indicator that the dosage is correct. So, in summary, our targets are we need to provide high calorie, high protein and high fat nutritious food and this can be achieved by following the right choices of ingredients and food. Then regular intake of vitamin supplements, fiber, salt and water. So, the right dosage and correct way of administering pancreatic enzymes is very important 
and for this you can take the help of a CF dietitian or doctor. In short, the regular use of pancreatic enzymes and CF vitamins combined with a healthy diet help meet nutritional goals. So, it is advisable to follow the instructions of a medical professional or dietitian trained in CF care. Kindly feel free to contact us in case of any queries. So, now I will be showing you a demonstration as to how you can give the pancreatic enzymes for the infants because the older children can swallow the capsules as such. So, for infants it has to be administered in a much more simpler way. So, as I had mentioned earlier about the dosage, enzyme dosage trends available in India, the 10,000 international unit and the 25,000 international unit. Now, I have with me one of the 10,000 international unit capsules. So, this capsule would look something like this. So, this capsule, the pancreatic enzyme capsule has small beads like granules inside it. So, since the infants require a very smaller amount of pancreatic enzyme, the doctors or the dietitian would have generally uh, prescribed uh, uh, somewhere around 3000 or 2000 international units. So, you will have to divide this capsules. So, to divide this capsule, you have to first open up the uh, capsule. So, I have opened one of the capsule and the granules, you have to place the granules in a clean sheet of paper and divide it into approximate equal parts with the help of a clean spoon or spatula. So, you can divide it like this into parts as prescribed by your dietitian. Then you can pack each of this into pouches like this and keep so that you can be, you can give it along with the remaining feeds for the whole day. So, these uh, granules have to be uh, given in small amount of acidic medium. So, this acidic medium can be your jams or jelly or tomato sauce or even curds. So, now I will show you why we, why we suggest giving uh, these granules with, the, uh, with something acidic and preferably something sticky. So, right now I have with me a little quantity of jam and to it I have added the uh, granules. So, if you see this is sticky in nature. So, it remains intact to the uh, jam and thus you, you can ensure that all these granules uh, are given to the child and nothing is lost.